and welcome to today's webinar. Our webinar today centers around the top 10 enterprise machine translation use cases, starting with the first topic in this series, which focuses on secure communication and collaboration. My name is Kate Bradshaw, and I will be your host today. Your speakers today from SCL are Kirti Bashi, Language Technology Evangelist, and Randy Enderman, Enterprise Sales Director, who have over 15 years' experience delivering customized MT solutions to global enterprise clients. We expect today's webinar will last about 45 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. I will now pass you over to Kirti to begin the presentation today. Good morning, um, good afternoon, good evening. I, the first slide we have here on, this, on, the, on the presentation is a slide that shows you the activity that is going on on the web at any given moment. It's actually, if you went to the live site, those numbers are increasing at, at every moment. And what it shows is that there is a deluge of information. There is the information flow now has reached a level that has never been seen in the history of man. And, um, you know, from like 126 billion emails sent out every day to over a billion websites, you know, to, and billions of users on the, on the web, all producing information, all consuming information, all interacting in a variety of different ways that, um, we have never seen before that has completely changed the landscape for the enterprise in, in the modern day. Um, when you look at this content explosion in context, you see that there's been more information created in the last two years than there has been in the previous history of the human race prior to that. And this rate of information creation and acceleration of content is only going to continue, you know, as we move more and more to more video and audio and multimedia presentations, you know, uh, with uh, augmented reality. The, the level and the volume of information is only going to increase. And this presents very special challenges to modern enterprise. So we see that as information is moving around in huge flowing rivers of content across the globe, that social media and social networking and conversations going on in these environments like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram are affecting the brands and the impressions that customers have about companies and you know what products they want to buy or not buy. And the control of what really matters is now distributed across hundreds of millions of people. And you know, it's, in the old days, it used to be marketing people controlled the messaging. And people sort of took the, the messages as true. Now, an opinion shared about a hotel experience can influence the, the next 100 purchases. So it's, it's a very different world. We're also seeing that more and more enterprises are global, and there's teams of people working across the world. And this means that there's much more communication and collaboration across language. You know, people in China tend to prefer to work in Chinese, and people in Germany tend to prefer to work in German. So you know, you can't force everyone to work in English. So th even within corporations, there is now a lot of interaction happening that crosses language. When we look at what is happening in translation today, we see that you know, as we look across the public translation portals that exist on the internet today, that there are easily in excess of 500 billion words a day being translated by generic empty portals. So we've reached a point in the history of man where people take translation for granted. People expect it at any time, at in every circumstance, they want it on their phone, they want it when they're traveling, they want it when they are on a plane. You know, they, it, the, the need and the expectation for translation is now almost universal. It's like as 
widely uh, a, a core assumption about this is something that I need if I am someone who moves across the world, uh, as the Internet is. And it's also interesting to see that in the latest Davos, uh, uh, the Davos conference with the CEOs from around the world, the two primary concerns were issues around cybersecurity and data privacy. So we're living with all these forces sort of interacting at the same time. And we see that as the public use of MT increases and will only continue to increase further, that there are spe specific problems for the enterprise in the generic public MT context. The, the public MT is one size fits all. So it, it is what it is, and it is not something that is tuned to your specific needs, to your specific language. So if you are an automotive company, you want you know, terms related to automo automotive technology to be done, to be done well and you know, accurately. Um, if you're an IT company, you want uh, the, the language around information technology concepts and processes to be clearly stated and clearly translated. But this is not really possible with the generic public empty portals. You know, they you get what you get. They're, the way they monetize and the way the, the people that they're serving are the random um, internet user and they the the need for to tune it to specific people is not a priority for any of the generic public empty portals and there is there are also very serious security risks involved with the the use of these things if you look at the two leading uh, translation portals on the web today Google and Microsoft they very clearly state in their terms of service agreements that when you pass translations through their portals, they have the right to use that information to do many things. They, so they have the right to store it, to modify it, to create derivative works, and to basically use it for analysis to generate other things out of it. And so if you are translating private corporate information through these portals, there is real risk in uh, in what can happen here. Even though you know there are not like hundreds of people sitting and watching what is going on, the machine learning algorithms that that pervade our life today are looking at this information and can present this information at the most inadvertent times. You know, and there were some recent data breaches where very private information was exposed and made. It caused great embarrassment to a, a large multinational. So we see that machine translation is now an essential requirement for many business decisions, just because this is the nature of the modern ent global enterprise. You know, you are scattered across the world. You're you're designing your products in America, possibly, or Germany, and you're manufacturing in China. Everyone there does not speak all the languages that the original content was created in. And there's a need to share information that is very critical in the development stages um, or when you have urgent client situations to be able to share and resolve problems and make the most informed decisions by sharing the right information. So we see that while the average web user has now reached a point where they expect translation all the time, 24-7, anytime, whether on their phone, on their tablet, on their PCs, and whenever and everywhere they go when they're traveling, the same it, kinds of requirements are now emerging within the global enterprise. There is a need to be able to process multilingual information for communication and collaboration primarily. Communication within about secret trade practices and, and product development, and communication without to the customers and the partners that may be consuming information that helps them work with your company to be able to add value to the whole overall process. And so this, the, the challenge we have today is that increasing this conversation is multilingual and increasingly includes internal content, which is 
mostly confidential. And there's also a huge mass of external content that is beyond the scope of traditional translation-focused activities within the enterprise. The use of public empty portals puts confidential and privileged information at risk and creates the possibilities of data leaks. So this is, this is now um, becoming more and more apparent to many global enterprises. And what we see is that there's a secure, uh, there's a need for a secure and corporate-friendly translation solution. So basically, the people want a Google Translate within the company, you know, but a private one. So it's like your XYZ Translate, where, which is tuned to your language, which is tuned to the terminology that is most important to you, which is available 24-7, which always keeps information that is private private, and which allows you to interact and engage in conversations with customers in real-time dynamic manner. That the need for this is becoming a very clearly understood and uh, important requirement for people across the world. Now, there have been some surveys done about the use of machine translation in the enterprise. And there was a recent one by Common Sense Advisory, which is a, a, a research firm that focuses on the translation business. And they saw that 65% of the people realize, of the enterprise uh, executives and middle managers that they surveyed, admitted that very frequently or frequently colleagues were using generic public machine translation because it was just necessary for them to be able to function in their daily working uh, roles, interacting. So if you are someone who manufactures a high technology electronic component in China, but you're designing um, the product in America, you may have a very clear and ongoing need to be able to chat, be able to send emails back and forth across Chinese, Chinese and English, to be able to share information about changes in design and new product strategies or customer feedback. You know, these are things that make and break companies in terms of their future abilities and, and future presence on the market. The, so the same survey also pointed out that 62% of the people that were surveyed were very concerned, or at least concerned, that there was a loss of intellectual property and proprietary data when employees, in an uncontrolled manner, were sending important information through the MT portals. And so it is now very uh, clearly understood that, that the MT is something that people expect have access to all the time. It is not something that is relegated to uh, a localization department only, you know, though sometimes that may be the way that it's done. But more and more, employees across the company, especially those involved in customer support, customer service, uh, those employed, those engaged in product development where product development teams are global and where manufacturing is, tends to be more and more frequently distributed to other parts of the world and where if you don't have the right communications in place, you can have products that come out in thousands and millions that don't meet market requirements. So I think it's worth taking a look at where can machine translation be used in the enterprise. And if we understand that the need is really about communication and collaboration, and so you see that customer support content is a key requirement, that all kinds of product, test, design, development uh, functions involve communication that very often tends to be multilingual. Um, as special research is done within the company, there are confidential reports that need to be distributed to key players across the world, and it's in increasingly this conversation is becoming multilingual. And just in general, just being able to send emails in whatever language that is most convenient to you, and being able to chat with uh, 
global employees on an ongoing live basis is a very critical requirement, and we see the you know this this need of the for the global enterprise is now becoming much more visible and uh, later on we'll present a case study that shows you exactly you know how this has become a reality and we have we're seeing this uh, happening all the time so there's information flowing at rates we've never seen before so this information is flowing within the corporation and this information is also out at large in the world so today's modern enterprise needs to have huge amounts of information flow, what is often called content. You know, the, the word content is just used to describe words that are attempting to establish thought leadership, build brand awareness, to provide buying research, to provide sales guidance. So everything related to getting is involves masses of words that are flowing all the time. The, the words involved in keeping customers, you know, just keeping customers happy when they have a problem, providing the right kinds of support, educating customers on how to best use your products, especially with complex technology products, you know, or engineering products, providing ongoing advice and best practices to, to raise the quality of the con customer experience and to keep customers happy, and just to encourage customers to be able to, to provide recommendations because we see that now more and more new customers are influ influenced by what old customers thought. And this content, these words are now the way a lot of information, you know, th this is what modern marketing is about. The new custom customers today expect to get the right content at the right time, regardless of where they are. You know, again, it could be it could be on paper, it could be on the, on the web, it could be on a phone, it could be when they're walking through an airport. And they expect this information all the time, you know, through the entire customer relationship, from the time where they look to buy something to, uh, to the time where after they've bought it and they've tried it and then they have some sort of opinion and ex expression about it, you, you, you state that, you know, you see this with hotel reviews. You see it with the way people buy products on, uh, in, you know, on online portals like Amazon or eBay. And this is also happening in a less visible way in business-to-business -business context where other users are influencing new users and new customers and deeply affecting the way that this, uh, uh, and, and this, and this conversation and this content is by definition going to be multi multilingual and uh, available all across the world. So while you have this massive explosion with the customer base, you also have this, at the same time, you're having this internal expansion of communication and content happening, you know, where with the simplest and clearest examples is emails between sales and legal and partners and product teams. Uh, where very often these things, the conversations are multilingual and global. Um, marketing professionals need to understand what customers are saying, and they need to analyze what people, are, you know, the opinions people have on on the web, um, for, you know, their, their their experience with the customers. They want to know what things people like, what things people don't like, and what. The, the primary drivers of uh, customer behavior are. So again, the, it requires analysis and monitoring and survey of multilingual streams across the web. Very frequently now, it's very clearly established that global teams are sharing high value information across the web, you know, for innovation, for product design, for collaboration, just all kinds of things. Customer support now is a global thing. There's, one of the most popular machine translation applications, which we will talk about later on in the series, is to, to enhance and enable a multilingual conversation with customers and to help resolve problems on a much more rapid basis, in a much more multilingual basis. And of course, there's always the very confidential financial, human resource, and trade secret content 
that often also is now multilingual and that needs to be translated to enable international and any serious business uh, initiatives to move forward. So the modern enterprise requirement is increasingly about being able to provide machine translation and to be able to provide just-in-time translation. You know, the word machine translation often has negative connotation, but in the business context, when information is flowing at the rate it is today, the need for the modern enterprise is is very clear. They want to be able to have private and secure content information flowing across language. So machine translation that can be completely contained within a firewall or can be completely contained within the enterprise's control is very critical. They want the ability to be able to put it within their firewall or within their own uh, IT infrastructure and keep it private or to keep it in a completely controlled private web uh, environment where they know that information will not be reused or analyzed or anyhow compromised because if, if it's your next generation product or if it's the, the new iPod or the new iPhone or, or whatever that you're designing, you want to be able to have complete control of how that information is moving around. And increasingly, they need a solution that is not a one-size-fits-all. They want the ability to be able to tune the machine translation capabilities for their very specific needs, which means if you are a car company, want all the terms and the terminology and the language that involves cars and the problems that cars have and the way cars are made to be clearly and properly translated and understood. If you are a retail online services company, you want all the stuff that's related to transactions and the kinds of things that customers want to be able to understand, you know, the listings of products to be translated as accurately as possible. If you're a IT company, you want information technology terminology to be very clearly stated because a lot of confusion, a lot of negative customer experience comes from bad translation of, of bad or misinformation. So the modern enterprise is looking for control of this massive translation, you know, which starts with data privacy and security, but also extends to deployment and the control of the quality. And I'm, and this slide is just uh, one more uh, restatement of what I've just said, that. And in, in this time, I'm saying it from the context of what the STL MT solutions provide. You know, they're best of breed MT technology. Many of the, the several of the, the key engineers that w were working at the public MT portals originally started off in the same team that the SDL team has in place today. So today, SDL has statistical, adaptive, and neural MT solutions. And the key that differentiates the technology focus within SDL from others is that it's very focused on what the enterprise needs. It's not focused on servicing 500 million random internet users every day. It's focused on what does a company in the finance industry need versus what a company in the automotive industry needs. The solutions can be deployed in a highly secure, safe way, there are a variety of expert services available to enable the, the highest quality solutions to be delivered to the enterprise when it's needed. Many times, raw machine translation is enough. And increasingly, the, the quality of machine translation is getting so good that more and more we're seeing that just machine translation in its base format with some minimal terminology adjustments made can be useful to an enterprise in, in immediately uh, uh, you know, be available. But when you need experts to come and help tune the system, or when you need special linguists that can really drive the quality of empty systems higher, then you want them to be available. And S the SDL MT solutions pr have the foundation of expertise behind the services. 
also we see that as people become more familiar and as they as project needs vary from month to month, there is a need to be able to do some of this work yourself. And so there is the ability to to have several do it yourself options, you know, fast start options and when needed you bring experts in to do really complicated things. Um, the enterprise context very critical requirement is that information tends to flow. You don't want people cutting and pasting information from important applications into another application to just to be able to translate. If you, you want to have a translate button available in all your most important applications. So where does your information live within your company? Most likely in enterprise content management systems, within email, within office productivity tools like, you know, like Word and PowerPoint, um, and in data analysis or translation management systems. So the ability to be integrated tightly into those environments is a critical requirement for, for the modern enterprise and for the solution. So this is just another view of you know, what does flexible deploy, de deployment means. It could be you're shared in an, uh, you're, you're a shared tenant in a SDL managed cloud. You could have your own private cloud. You could have it on premise. You know, they're in the national security environment where STL has a great deal of experience. The only, con the only context in which they will ever use these kinds of um, technology solutions will be on premises. So we have a long history of experience there. So when we talk about quality, it's important to understand that the relationship of empty output quality is something that can be managed. And to get higher quality, you require expertise and you require effort. So the higher the quality requirement, the more expertise and the more effort is needed. And the, there are some things that many users can do themselves. You know, there's customer managed, cu rapid customization, for example, like just adding the most critical terms. You know, so if you're a car company and you're the names of your car, cars are likely to be words that you want to maintain this as exactly the same across um, every language that you you are involved with. The names of key executives, you know, which you know, name like Armstrong could be translated in some languages or by some machine translation. So you want, you know, names, places, critical terminology to be properly translated, and so th that can be done by the customer themselves. When you have the need for higher quality, then expert MT services are available, where experts who have been working, you know, who have a track record of you know, publishing patents and writing hundreds of papers and having long, deep experience with the technology then, you know, completely up to date with the current research. Uh, you know, the people if working in that, those teams can come to bear and work with you, um, can come and work with you on the, on developing your engines as, as needed. And for those situations where you need even higher quality, it is possible to bring linguistic experts who understand how machine translations learn, who understand how to train a machine translation to do a better job, who understand how to identify large-scale patterns of errors and solve these error patterns at the patent level rather than at the segment level. And this whole range of expert linguistic steering, expert empty development, and do-it-yourself rapid customization management. These are all options that are available within the, the SDL uh, enterprise MT product offerings. And of course, the, the more expertise that is required, there is a cost and time requirement with it. But generally, it is because you need higher quality, because you need to tune what the MT engine is doing to your very, very specific needs. You know, so there are some applications where you can just take a raw baseline, and it doesn't really matter. You know, you, th that's good enough for to get people to be able to just basically communicate about certain things so you, someone is not looking at a page of Chinese and know that, oh, this basically they're talking about how they're going to manufacture a circuit board. 
and I don't really need to know too much more than that, and I don't care really too much more than that. But you could add, you know, there's there's a range of customer managed uh, capabilities that you have, and then there are also uh, expertise things which again raise the quality of your MT output above public MT options. I uh, have one final slide here that just shows you what happens when you when you customize an MT solution and you do it properly. So um, w when you compare machine translation solutions, and here I, we have a very generalized chart that just shows you that in some domains, you're going to see that Google MT is going to do better than the SDL generic MT. And in other domains, you know, the, the SDL MT might do a little bit better than the Google MT. But we are quite confident that when we focus on a specific subject domain and when we focus on um, the very specific requirements of your application and your use case, we are always going to do better in terms of output quality then you can um, you can do with any generic solution, including ours. So hopefully I've given you a good sense for the massive uh, flow of information and how it's affecting business communications and collaboration within the corporation and also how it's how they're, we're being affected by the access people have to information nowadays. I'm going to hand this over now to my colleague, Randy, who will give you a very specific case study of an actual customer who went through this evaluation process. And uh, let me hand it over to him. Yeah, thank you, Kirti. And, and hello, and thank you to those joining us to today or, or those who happen to be listening to this recording uh, on a future date. Uh, so I'm going to provide a bit of context to um, uh, to what Kurti uh, has presented by taking you through a case study of an actual SDL customer. So this particular customer is a global company. Uh, they're based in the Southwest. Um, they conduct business in 40 countries. They sell more than 100,000 products to more than 100,000 customers. So this is really the, the, the quintessential uh, modern global organization. Um, and, and so if any of these statistics right here are, are similar in your organization, uh, I think it's fair to say that you might uncover some of the, the needs I'm about to address in your organization as well. Um, but their initial adoption of machine translation followed a very familiar path. So their content translation operation had grown in complexity and cost over the years, and they were looking to machine translation to scale their professional translate, human translation process. And to enable this, they ultimately deployed two products, a translation management system to streamline the end-to-end -end content localization process, and machine translation to perform some of the heavy lifting for the translators. And frankly, in the past, this would have been the extent to which machine translation was used in the enterprise. But uh, things have changed a lot, as Curdy said, and this is not where this story ends. It's where it really starts to get interesting. So as part of um, diagnosing their translation challenges, uh, this particular company conducted an internal employee survey where employees were asked, among other things, about the challenges they faced related to translation. And the survey had been expected to elicit responses from content creators and marketing teams, you know, the people who regularly interface with internal localization and globalization departments to get their stuff professionally translated, really the people who engage in that formal process. Uh, but instead, what they actually heard uh, was from people in customer support who were complaining about not being able to handle inbound emails in certain foreign languages. They heard from people in groups struggling to communicate with counterparts on engineering teams. Excuse me. They heard from people in product groups who were struggling to communicate with counterparts on engineering teams in foreign countries. Uh, they heard from research, uh, the research department um, who was trying to uh, essentially do uh, R&D uh, for their next line of products. And as part of that, they were trying to understand some of the R&D uh, that had been done in other parts of the country, and they simply couldn't understand it or ingest it and digest it fast enough because it wasn't in their language. And of course, they uh, really sort of caught them off guard is finance. Finance is not a department that you would, um, you would typically associate with a need for any sort of translation capability, but what they found is that they, their specific M&A teams in finance were struggling to do research on acquisitions 
when the company was a foreign entity because much of the information about that company was in a foreign language. Uh, so, so what the survey actually uncovered was a fairly broad business requirement for some sort of translation capability at multiple levels of the organization. Now, unfortunately, uh, the survey response also revealed that when employees um, uh, needed these services, they were prone to use any number of, of the several online translation portal, portals to satisfy that need. And when the company audited the frequency of their use, they discovered that up to five gigabytes of content per week was being submitted to these services for machine translation. So on average, if we extrapolate that out over a month, 20 gigabytes a month of internal communication threads, External communication, external communication threads with customers, um, uh, engineering designs. Uh, they even found that top executives were using these tools to communicate between one another uh, in a sort of informal email way. Uh, so really, all of these employees were un unwittingly exposing uh, content that was, um, was private to their company just simply in the course of their everyday job. And they, they did so without realizing it by using these um, unsecured translation tools. So this customer had set out to solve a, a very – so just to take stock of where we are, this customer had set out to solve a very common a traditional localization challenge around the cost of translation and the, the publishing times and the time it takes to traditionally localize content. And what they actually discovered almost by accident is a parallel need. Uh, whereby more than 90% of the translation that was occurring beneath the roof of their company uh, was, was through the disaggregate and unsanctioned use of online machine translation tools just by employees in a variety of different roles who were trying to do their everyday jobs. So, so they found that really interesting. They, they, they uh, assumed that translation was happening in a place that they had full control of, and, and what the survey actually revealed is that 90% of the content being translated was, was being done outside of their control uh, in a way that really put their business at risk. So ultimately, when it came down to addressing the problem, IT uh, was really at the forefront of this, and excuse me, and they had considered um, simply cutting off access to these online tools. I don't know why this slide keeps going forward, but uh, but given the frequency of their use, there, there's really no ignoring the fact that a machine translation tool is providing value to the business. So ultimately, this company was an early adopter of a solution we now call Secure Enterprise Translation. Uh, we've since deployed this solution in several dozen other name brand companies, uh, many of whom were similarly caught off guard by the widespread and unsanctioned use of these tools. And our experience with uh, both this particular customer and the ones that have followed have, um, have given us insight into a pretty clear trend. Uh, and that is organizations – I'm sorry about this slide. There we go. Let's leave it on this one. Organizations are recognizing the utility of machine translation in the enterprise and they're beginning to leverage it in a deliberate and controlled way that meets the various needs of the business. So this means allowing your IT departments to be in the driver's seat on security uh, by deploying on-premise or in a private cloud, uh, and ensuring the solution is accessed via single sign-on for adherence to corporate governance and security risk profiles. Uh, it means a solution that can scale cost-effectively, so it can operate on commodity hardware in an optimized, optimized footprint that's determined by you. It can run locally on a laptop in a, uh, or in a single server de uh, deployment uh, or in a server cluster for very high volume throughput requirements, all of them requiring very, very little maintenance. Uh, it offers you multiple levels of control over the quality. So Kirti mentioned uh, uh, a lot about quality. Um, it offers you these levers from the superior out-of-the-box quality of, of really what is state-of-the-art neural machine translation to bespoke engine builds that learn and understand the language of your business and that can guarantee the proper translation of things like brand and product terms or uh, company-specific or industry-specific nomenclature. And of course, at the end of the day, it means a solution that is easy to access and to use. Um, it can be deployed in a web environment that looks and operates like a, a secure version of Google Translate. Kirti uh, pointed out that a lot of companies who deploy this essentially want it to look just like the tools that their employees are used to using. They just want it to be specific uh, and locked down for their company. So a lot of companies will deploy this at, a very, at, at, the, at the very least in a web environment with their logo on it. They'll skin it with the color and, and the look and feel of that company's products. Uh, and they'll often redirect from public uh, in, uh, unsecure services uh, to this internal very secure uh, service. So, so that's really sort of the lowest hanging fruit as far as how to access the service. But of course, it's integrated into um, 
uh, places where people would need translation, such as the uh, Outlook, uh, Outlook, Word, PowerPoint. Uh, so really the Microsoft Office suite. Uh, there's also a rich API, uh, a, a mature API, very well documented API, uh, so it can be integrated into third-party services as needed. So just to wrap this up, uh, I want to sort of summarize what's been said here. Um, we're in the midst of a, a content explosion, the likes of which none of us has ever seen before. Kirti's first several slides made that very clear. Um, our experience suggests that often um, employees are ahead of the organization, uh, seeking out the tools they need to get their jobs done. And of course, this now is, includes machine translation uh, to enable communication, collaborat collaboration, and understanding. Um, and this is happening pretty often in a lot of name brand global companies. Uh, and unfortunately, this sort of haphazard or ad hoc uh, or unsanctioned use of uh, insecure machine translation tools poses a risk to the business. We have several clear-cut examples of this. Uh, so it's time to treat MT like an enterprise product. That, that's the message we're trying to deliver to you today. It's time to treat MT like, a, like any other enterprise product you have uh, deployed uh, across your organization. And this means adopting it, securing it, controlling it, and tuning it to meet the specific needs of the enterprise and solve uh, the modern business problems created by this deluge of content. Uh, and of course, the sophisticated expectations of customers. So that is our presentation today. I just want to pivot now to the question and answer uh, portion. Uh, before I do so, I just want to give you guys an opportunity to download any additional content. You can also contact me directly. Uh, we didn't want to just give you a, uh, an email black hole that um, you, know, you emailed and, and you weren't sure where that email was going. So here is my personal email address. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions if you want to engage further with SDL on this. I can help put you in touch with the right folks if it's not me. Um, and of course, uh, visit sdl.com forward slash mt for, um, uh, for additional downloads and content. And you can see often to the right here uh, that the attachments are available here if you prefer to get them now and not go to the website. So let me go ahead and turn to the question and answer portion. We've had some questions come in uh, over the course of our presentation. So let me read these here. The first question is, um, we have an interest in neural machine translation. Can neural machine translation engines be customized? So for those of you that don't know, uh, neural machine translation is really the third generation of MT technology, and, and it's pretty exciting stuff. It's not just an evolution in the technologies that came before it, but really more of a revolution. Uh, it, it's presenting um, very, very exciting out-of-the-box quality gains that uh, we believe is going to open up MT uh, to a host of additional use cases where it's not being considered for use today. Um, it's likely going to be the dominant MT technology for the next 15 years or so. Uh, and it holds a tremendous amount of promise, uh, particularly in the area of customization, which is what the question was about. Uh, so to answer your question specifically, yes, uh, we are able to train neural MT engines. And the good news is uh, neural MT as a technology requires much smaller data inputs for training. Um, and so one of the problems we used to encounter is that um, uh, enterprises wanted their very own purpose-built engine, but they didn't have the data to, uh, for us to build that or to customize it. What we're finding now is because uh, in neural machine translation, these data requirements are so much less that companies who previously wouldn't have had the, the requisite data for training can now do so. So uh, again, to just uh, tie the loop on this question. Yes, neural MT can be trained. Uh, the data requirements are much lower than what you may have previously expected if you looked into training uh, a statistical MT engine. And, and certainly follow up with us if this is something you want to um, speak about in the context of your own use case or content. Can, so thank is, you for that question. There's yeah. another question that says, "Do Go you ahead, think?" Yes, yeah, sorry. Can I if I can I join in? Sure. Yeah. Do you think the accuracy of technical language MT is advanced enough to support the aerospace industry where mistranslation could, in the worst case, cost someone their life? So I, I think w one of the things we need to understand about MT is that, that it, it is something that has to be ad adapted and adjusted to the specific use requirements for each large enterprise, and especially when you're dealing with a situation here where mistranslation could cost someone their life. So in, in, we have been engaged in many kinds of uh, MT use cases where 
some information is so critical that it has to be human translated because if it really, really matters and if we're talking about life and death, then there needs to be either, it either needs to be human translated from scratch or it needs to have a high amount of human oversight in terms of ensuring and guaranteeing that the translations are accurate. So there is a triage function that is done across massive amounts of information on a regular basis. And I, mean, I can give you a very simple example. If you're translating 150,000 hotel descriptions, the, of, of which say 10% are f four and five star hotels. So really only 15,000 need real post editing or human, ed uh, human oversight. The other 140,000 can be raw machine translation because the customer expectations are lower. The, you know, they don't, you know, if you're paying a much lower rate, you, the price is the primary objective and you want to just understand what the basic hotel thing is. So that's a simple example of an information triage perspective on a large volume of content. And so we, in the aerospace cont context, we need to understand what are the most critical things and then just apply more human expertise there. You want to take? Yeah. Th thank you, Kirti. Thank you. Um, appreciate your um, answering that question. Um, I'm looking through the uh, other questions here. So the next one is, we're exploring MT for extremely high volume translation needs in the billions of words per month. Um, can you support such high volumes? Interesting. So, so this is, I presume this is, um, I, I, I am assuming this is some sort of social media use case or sentiment analysis use case where we typically see these, these very high volumes. But in any case, um, really the only way to do this economically is to bring the technology in-house uh, so you can scale the architectural footprint uh, without breaking the bank. Uh, so the answer is yes. Uh, you know, you can scale this technology to really meet any volume need uh, depending upon how much hardware you want to throw at the solution. Um, and, and really, once this is done, what we'd recommend is you deploy in a clustered server fashion, uh, and that enables you the, um, the flexibility for, for these huge volume requirements. Um, one sort of uh, piece of anecdotal evidence, we just performed some testing on our on-premise MT engines, and I don't ex have the exact um, hardware specifications memorized, but uh, essentially we deployed a single language in a cluster server setup, and we were able to achieve up to 650,000 words a minute. Uh, so that's an astonishing um, amount of translation. Uh, and really, the sky is the limit. If you have a high volume use cases, um, you know, you're going to need an on-premise solution that can scale to meet them. So it is possible. Um, I'm, is it possible to integrate this system into other CAT tools or TMS? Um, so I don't know about non -S so so this is really referencing um, a traditional MT use case where it's being used in a in a translation um, capability or to support human translators, uh, and and the answer is our MT tools are integrated into our TMS and our CAT tool, um, and very likely uh, integrate uh, into other tools as well. Though I can't say for sure. And we have an so, open API, so if you want to do the integration on your own into your into other TMS or any other specific kind of software that you have very deep investment in, it is possible to do that. You know, we we uh, we will work with you, and we have a very straightforward API that will allow you to do that. That has enough control of it. There's another question here: How does NMT manage terminology? Uh, this is one of the challenges with NMT that it, unlike uh, statistical machine translation, uh, where it was pretty straightforward to be able to m monitor terminology, the use of terminology within neural machine translation is much more challenging, and many of the people that are playing with the open source toolkits are ha finding that it's very difficult to do. We have figured out ways to do this, and we are introducing these. Um, when you say how, like what specific technology are we using, I cannot answer that in, you know, in, at a at a technical level that would be suitable for this this forum here. But um, for those who are interested, you know, we, we can have a deeper conversation and we can explain the process by which we do that. But we have, this is, this is how SDL focuses on, on machine translation technology, because we know 
the terminology is a critical requirement in the enterprise context. And so being able to use your terminology is an absolute necessity within the neural machine translation framework. And this is exactly the focus that our research team had when they developed this capability. But I, I suggest we have a closer conversation for, for, to do that. I'm seeing another question here. So how can I quantify the need for enterprise MT in my organization? What, what sort of things do I look for? Okay, so so yeah, this this is a uh, this is a good question too, because a lot of people tend to think, well, that's not really happening at my organization. But uh, what we there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, the, the simplest way is for IT to simply audit uh, what employees are doing. Now, you know, in some countries, you you can't legally track your employees like that, and you know that can get a, a bit a bit uh, a bit hairy. So uh, ultimately, what I would look at is the profile uh, of your own company. Are you a global company? Uh, do you have cross uh, divisional teams in different countries? Uh, do you require employees to do everything in a single language, or are they allowed to do business in the local language? And what we find is in almost all global companies that we encounter, uh, even without um, uh, quantifying the precise need using you know IT tools and understanding how much content is flowing out uh, to these unsecure external services. Uh, what we generally find is every organization uh, that we go into and that we talk to about this, there's, there's some level of this going on. Um, the case study uh, we presented is not even the worst case we've seen. We've, we've seen actually uh, worse cases of this that um, uh, with even you know, more sensitive data at more name brand companies going out. So, so really it comes down to you, know, you can use the tools uh, at the disposal of your IT department to actually measure this or you can make a, a, a certain level of reasonable assumptions given the profile of your company. There's a, another question here. Uh, oh, sorry, Kirti, go ahead. Uh, I, I, was just, I just noted that question, so you, you go ahead. Well, so I was just going to say, um, the, uh, the other question here is specific to the aerospace and defense industry. Do you know of any entity in the aerospace and defense industry using MT for their technical publications, maintenance, and flight manuals? Uh, so that's a very specific question. Um, I would have to actually talk to uh, other folks in our organization to understand um, if we have somebody who's specifically doing that. Um, more broadly, um, our MT engines uh, were essentially built for the defense industry. So the technology that we're now, uh, that SDL now sells, uh, was originally developed in partnership with DARPA, uh, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. Um, back in the early 2000s when the, the war on terror was just getting started, uh, the government had a need to translate the railroad cars full of intelligence they were gathering on the ground in Afghanistan. And so uh, our company responded to a bid from DARPA to build the world's first um, uh, MT engines that could do things like Farsi and Pashto and Dari uh, to make sense of that intelligence. So there is a tremendous amount of history. Um, um, our, our stuff continues to be used. Uh, pretty widely in the defense establishment, but I don't know offhand if it's been used for the specific uh, uh, um, case in which you've identified. But I, I think if you look across the world and you look at any complex engineering products or like very, you know, products that have massive amounts of, of, of uh, content around them, you know, so like, like aerospace, or like nuclear reactors, like automotive or co complex machinery of any kinds, you know, there, uh, there is going to be a machine translation presence there because the sheer volume of information that they have to deal with requires that some machine translation be used at least for the, the less, um, you know, the, the less, the, the, the for the content that is not life and death sensitive. So wherever there is complexity, engineering, terminology, machine translation is a very good fit because it can be optimized for that very specific purpose. I think we're done now. Um, are there any more questions? I'm not seeing any other questions come in here, Kurti. I think we can... Um I think uh, we can give thanks to the, everybody that joined us, and we can pass it back to you, Kate. Lovely. Thank you very much, Randy and Katie, and thank you for answering all those questions. Much appreciated. So um, I will absolutely wrap up. Thank you very much for everyone who has attended today, um, and we will absolutely share the recording with you very shortly. 
Um, and we look forward to seeing you hopefully again on one of our future webinars in this series about MT translation use cases. So just to say have a great rest of day and thank you from me.